What's up, Ram fans? Welcome back to Tuesday Night Sports. I'm your host, as always, Emily Kozell, here to pick up right where Ren left off and close out the night with some updates in the world of CSU tennis. As well, let's take a look into how the Avs just keep on winning, no matter the odds. So, with all of that being said, let's just jump right into the action. Over the weekend, women's tennis faced off against both Loyola Marymount and Cal State Fullerton on a long road trip out to California. And let's just say, these results weren't exactly what Ram fans were hoping for. To start the weekend off, the Green and Gold took on Loyola Marymount at their place in Los Angeles. And coming into this one, the Lions team surely wasn't a squad that CSU could overlook at all. Seeing as they currently sit at number 17 in the weekly ITA rankings for NCAA tennis. And when you dive into the end results for Friday, it's pretty clear that on the other side, this LMU team didn't underestimate the Rams either, pulling off the match dub with an overall score of 4-1, to one, and once again proving exactly why they keep on receiving national praise. But even though the green and gold couldn't pull off the team dub, there is still definitely a bright spot for the Rams amidst all the chaos. CSU grad student Summer Delabona killed it in her individual singles matchup, taking the win in the fifth spot in the match order and putting the only point for CSU the entire afternoon on the board. Not to mention adding her already 13th win of the season so far, which catapults her up the list to grab the second leading scoring spot for CSU this year so far. Now that's pretty impressive if you ask me. And on to their second matchup of the weekend, the Green and Gold had a pretty quick turnaround, traveling an hour down south through the traffic to take on Cal State Fullerton the very next day. And unfortunately, just like on Friday, the Rams couldn't get it done in this one either, with Fullerton winning in a tight one 4-3. to three. But hey, to be fair to the road squad for a sec, the Titans are yet another ranked team in the ITA. And it's really important to note that this CSU squad has only lost to ranked teams so far this year. So while it was an 0-2 weekend for the Green and Gold, they aren't doing as bad as you may think. And they come out of this trip out west sitting at a decent 6-5 record. And a quote from CSU's assistant coach, Taylor Hollander summed up this match in Cali perfectly, saying, It came down to some points here and there that didn't go our way and some unfortunate matchups, but we did do well. And man, was she right. I mean, this Titan team is some tough competition. And again, the Rams only lost by one point. And behind this mixed success on the court is CSU ace Radhika Bushkava who took the dub in the number one spot for singles. And beyond just last weekend, this junior is currently the one to watch when it comes to this Rams team, currently sitting as the leading singles winner for the green and gold. And with how consistent she's been week in and week out, it really doesn't seem like she has any plan of slowing down soon. And now that we're done with looking back at this weekend, when you look ahead in the schedule for this squad, this week marks the start of their conference play. And just like softball, their first matchup is against San Jose State on Saturday at 10 in the morning. We'll be sure to keep you in the loop on that one and everything else going down on the court over the course of the spring here at CTV. And on that note, let's switch gears and talk about the pride and joy of Colorado hockey the Avs, who currently sit at a record of 45, 13, and 4. That's right, only 13 losses all season, which obviously puts them at first place in the Central Division, not to mention the leader for the coveted President's Trophy. And last night, 
Avalanche took that league-leading record to the test against the third-place squad in the Pacific Division, the Edmonton Oilers, right down the road at Ball Arena. And so, how'd they do? Well, the Avs managed to pull off yet another win in overtime with a score of 3-2. to two. And man, what an exciting one it was. Immediately following the puck drop, the Avs struck first, led by none other than number 96, Miko Ratanen, who added on his team leading 31 goals so far this season. And on the other side, the Oilers laid a goose egg out there, even though they took a whopping 10 shots on goal. But luckily for Edmonton fans, their Oilers started to cash in more of these opportunities come the second period, where Kyler Yamamoto and Evander Kane both finally hit bottom against Avs keeper Darcy Cooper. But hey, the Avs were also able to put up a point once again by their star Raditan to even things up at two apiece entering the third, which was an absolute nail-biter. Both teams were tied up and no one was able to make a shot. Seriously, there were no goals the entire period. Just some great defense from both sides of the ice. Which then leads us into overtime. Where, like so many times this season, the Avs were able to get a quick shot off and take the win before overtime really even got started taking things less than a minute into extra time thanks to a slap shot from Nate McKinnon. Overall, this was a great game where both sides could have taken things. But I have to say, as a Colorado sports fan, I'm so happy that the Avs got the win. And they have quite the team this year and were even able to add two more guys to their already loaded roster before the NHL trade deadline hit yesterday. And Aturi Kunakan from the Montreal Canadiens, and Andrew Caglano from San Jose. And man, if this squad is already playing this well, I can't even imagine what they'll be like now with these two new pieces. And with that, Ram fans, that's all the action I have for you tonight. Tune in tomorrow for Laced Up. Thanks for watching and have a great night.